What's up everybody? It's Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig and today's video is super exciting. I'm unboxing my new Sony 400mm F28 G Master. So here we go. So the day has come, this lens is here. I still can't believe it that it's in my house that I'm making this video. If you asked me six months ago if I thought I'd be making a, an unboxing video with this lens, I would say you were crazy. Before I get into the unboxing of this beast, I just wanna talk a little bit about my journey getting here. If you aren't really interested, if you don't care, I'll put the, uh, the timestamp in the description below. You can just fast forward uh, to the unboxing. But I did wanna talk a little bit about kind of my thoughts about this lens and how I ended up getting one. When I first heard the announcement for this lens by Sony, my initial emotional response was one of anger and frustration. And that is because we already had a 400 millimeter focal length with the Sony 100 to 400 G Master. And granted, this one is a lot faster, lets in a lot more light, but I just thought that the focal length was redundant. And not only that, it was a focal length that didn't work for me. It was just too short. And if I was going to be using this lens with a teleconverter like 98% of the time, it just didn't make sense for me to spend the money for that 2.8 aperture. For reference, I shoot with the Sigma 500 millimeter f4 sports lens with the NC11 adapter also by Sigma. The Sigma lens is incredibly sharp. The image quality is really stellar. If you are a Canon or Nikon shooter, I would highly recommend this lens. If you are looking for something, a long fast prime that is new and you wanna save yourself a few thousand dollars, it's a really great option for Sony shooters, I recommend it with an asterisk, and that is the image quality is still extremely good, but the autofocusing system is not quite there. I wasn't getting as many keepers as I would have liked in situations where focus should have been able to lock on and I should have been able to get some sharp shots. But like anybody that's hungry for long fast primes from Sony, I watched all the videos of all of the YouTubers who went to the Sony event, got to shoot with this lens, got to shoot a soccer game. I watched all of the videos that are out there and there aren't many after that about this lens. None of them are really talking about this lens from a wildlife perspective, but I still watched them anyway and began to drool a little bit over this lens. So I rented one with the teleconverters because for me, I really wanted to see what the image quality of this lens was with the teleconverters attached. Unfortunately for me, the weather really didn't cooperate for the days that I had a rental, but I got to shoot with it enough to know that this lens was really something to photograph with and it took teleconverters really, really well. The 1.4 is super sharp. You, you can't tell that there's a teleconverter attached, at least I couldn't. I didn't shoot as much with the 2X teleconverter as I wanted to. I did a lot of test shots around my house, but I didn't get out and, and shoot with it in the field. But what I did see, I was, I'm really impressed with so far. After renting this lens, I really began to have a change of heart about whether or not this lens was right for me. Because the truth is, the so this lens has, a, despite the fact that the focal length might be a little short, it has some advantages over the Sigma. One of them is that, the, that this lens, I have a much more versatility in terms of focal length. I have the 400, of course, I have a 560, with the 1.4 teleconverter and I have an 800 with a 2X teleconverter. With the Sigma, I'm really capped at 500 millimeters because it just, the AF system just isn't there with the teleconverter attached. What I also realized was I'm using the 2.8 aperture just in a different way. With the 1.4 teleconverter, I get an F4, which is what I've been used to shooting with, but I gain 60 more millimeters of focal length. Not only that, but I also gain all of the benefits to shooting with the Sony cameras. You know, the reasons why I switched to Sony from Canon in the first place, shooting with this lens really uh, takes advantage of all that the Sony cameras have to offer. There are no compromises now. I can just shoot 
I can, you know, my keeper rate is going to go way up. My ability to lock, lock focus a lot faster. Not only that, but to have such a lightweight lens that I can hand hold it. When I was renting this lens, I handheld it most of the time is just phenomenal. And I think just worth it for me. So let's get into the unboxing. All right, so we got this here. Be careful not to get this box cutter too deep in here. You just never know if you're cutting. All right. All right, we've got some paperwork here that I'm likely going to be throwing away at some point. <laughs> All right, some packaging. And it's sort of sitting in there like that in its case. Oh, this is a strap. I think this is a strap to the case. Put that over there. guys you see it here it is okay I'll open it this way so you guys can see it even before me ho 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 look at that guy oh man okay so another strap this is the strap I think you can actually attach this to the lens if you wanted to put it put it over your shoulder without the case. I'm probably not going to be using this case very much. Um, I have other bags that I can use instead that will be a little bit easier, but it's good to have the case. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, so these are the keys. These are the, you can lock this case, so these are the keys to the case if I wanted to lock it securely. It's also got these um, kind of rubber feet on the case, both on the long and the short end. So you can put it on the ground like this, but you can also like like this, but you can also put it on the ground like this and have a little bit more protection with those feet, which is nice. Look at this baby. All right. lens cap. Really nice, soft, high quality lens cap. And this hood. Let's see if I can... Oh, there we go. Let's put all these little pieces in there. There she is. There she is. Wow. Look at that front element. It's beautiful. When I finally decided that I wanted to buy this lens, the question then became where to get it from because nobody has this lens in stock. If you go to Adorama, b &H, you know, the big, those, the big camera stores, it says it's either back ordered or it's available for pre-order, but nobody has it in stock. 
You can't even get it for pre-order on Best Buy or Amazon for that matter. And I eventually I went to my local camera store and they told me that basically they were waiting for Sony, that they were, that they were waiting on them to send them their, you know, their shipment of lenses. My local camera store had ordered, I think four or five of these. All of them were reserved by the time I was asking them about this lens. One I think was a soft commit and they asked me if I wanted to be put on the list and I said yes and I didn't even know what that meant. I assumed that it that it meant I was not gonna be getting it for a while because there were four or five people ahead of me. I didn't even know if I was gonna get a lens in the first shipment or when they expected it. It was just, uh, it was really frustrating that Sony, for whatever reason, whether it's because they didn't anticipate this lens being as popular as it was, or it's just taking them a long time to make. I don't know, but it's it's really, the availability of it is frustrating. And then all of a sudden I got a call from my local camera store this week saying that everybody that was ahead of me in line had passed on their opportunity to get this lens and it was mine if I wanted it. And I thought, yeah, so here it is. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope this video was entertaining for you. If you liked it, you know what to do. Please like, share, subscribe. I would really appreciate that. If you wanna see more videos about this lens, about me shooting out in the field with it, I do wanna do some other testing with it, more testing with teleconverters and maybe some image quality tests of the A7R III versus the A9. If there's any discernible differences in image quality, I'm kind of curious about that kind of thing. So if you wanna see those videos, or if you have any specific questions about this lens, please comment down below. You can also find me on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. I'm going to be going to Olympic National Park in the month of June. I'm challenging myself to do a whole month where I post patron only content for 30 days the whole month of June. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to check it out. The link is in the description below. Until the next video, everybody, take care, happy adventuring, happy shooting. See you later. Bye.